Hello, my name is Nigel Griffiths. I work in the Advanced Technology Centre in the UK, part of IBM Rip. In this Back to Power Basics movie, we're going to create a logical partition and boot it up. I've just logged into the HMC. This is the work campaign, so let's look at our systems, which we find in here. These are our five systems. We're going to create a logical partition on this machine here called Bronze. It's a 520. It has two logical partitions at the moment. This full system partition is really only used when we initially start up the box and it grabs all the resources so we can check what's actually inside the machine. Quite often people delete this. I've also got a Bronze VIO server here that's uh, set up. Now both of these are not active so we can uh, ignore them for the moment. All the resources in the machine are available to us. Now we want to create a new logical partition we have to go to the server level, select which machine we want to create the logical partition on, and then we can take the operations configuration create logical partition, and we can either create a VIO server or an AIX Linux logical partition. So give it a name, let's call it uh, demo. So we remember what it's about. Profile name, this is more important in Power 4 days. But we can have vi different profiles with different uh, resources in them. Look at dedicated CPUs first of all. Here we say how many whole CPUs we actually want to put into a logical partition. This two CPUs are given to this logical partition and when it hasn't got anything to run on these two CPUs, it will run inside AIX the idle loop. It's actually a process called wait and will waste uh, compute power at that time. The minimum and maximum are constraints for dynamic changes to the logical partition if we as an operator want to change the number of CPUs wholly allocated to this logical partition. Now I don't recommend dedicated CPUs very much. I always tend to use the shared processing uh, available to a logical partition because this is much more flexible and uh, we make much better use of our resources. So let's look at shared. Here instead of whole CPUs we can talk to hundreds of a CPU once we're above a minimum of a 10% of a CPU or 0.1. So in here we could say the desired is to have uh, two whole CPUs and the maximum is two and a half CPUs and we'll set a minimum of uh, one CPU so that we won't start unless there's at least a whole CPU available to us. In later movies we'll look at some of these other functions in here about the uh, which pool we're in, um, is uncapped or not, and its weight factor. Now we have to decide that we have these two CPUs, we have to decide how many CPUs we're actually going to use to provide that compute time. Well, of course, if we need two CPUs, we've got to have at least two CPUs up here, but we could say three, for example, and a maximum of four. This means that our two CPUs worth of CPU time can actually be spread out across three CPUs if necessary. This will allow us to peek over the two CPU uh, worth of compute power along this logical partition. Now we have uh, memory. And again, we have the desired. This is what we're actually going to get. Let's say uh, four gigabytes for our partition, and want it to be able to, if we want to change this, take it up to six gigabytes. And this is uh, far too low for a minimum. Let's say uh, one gigabyte as a minimum. So we normally will get the four gigabytes. If the four gigabytes aren't available, it will allow us to go down to. Uh, one gigabyte and be able to start a logical partition but these one and six are normally only used for dynamic logical partition changes now our IO resources here I know that my disks are connected to this resource here a T slot is actually built into the back plane of the machine and a C slot is actually uh, an adapter slot on the back of the machine so this is at the built-in disk, so I want to select that. And we could, for example, pick up our Ethernet controller here, so I select this. If I hit As Required, it will fill in this column here. 
This means this logical partition can't start unless that device is actually ready. Alternative is a desired, and we might use that, for example, for a CD drive. If it's available, we'll have it. If it's not available, we'll start anyway, and we'll, we can dynamically move that in if we actually need the CD drive. Now, in this case, I'm not going to use a Ethernet controller in a in an actual uh, adapter. So uh, I'm going to use the HEA. So I'll clear that one, and we'll carry on. I'll show you that in a second. Virtual adapters. Um, we're going to use real adapters for this simple logical partition. We'll come back to those in a different movie. We have two serial ports. These are used as a a console connection via the HMC to actually talk to the logical partition as it's booting up and until we get it on the network. From then on, we tend to talk to the logical partitions um, over the network. And we'll carry on next. So here's our logical host Ethernet adapters. We have um, one of them in the machine and it provides um, four different ports uh, split between the port IDs and port groups. And so we'll select one that uh, this first one I know is physically connected and we'll configure that. Which actual port we want. So I'll go for the first port on that first first connection. This is our virtualization actually implemented in the hardware here so this will be a nice fast Ethernet port. We have other features here that we can add and uh, I'll just squeeze these on to the screen and uh, we actually recommend that uh, all of these get clicked here. Now, if we didn't know what these actually meant we can click help and let me scroll these onto the screen and we can say, well, what is enable connection monitoring? And we have a description here of what that actually means. So the help system is uh, quite nicely built and can help us out here. And we want to boot into normal mode. We'll look at the final panel, which is a summary. If we were designing this, um, not ad lib as I'm doing here, but uh, from a spreadsheet of designing what our logical partition resources will be, we can use this as a final check that we got everything right. And we'll see it finish there to actually create our logical partition. If you actually click on this machine we'll now see we have a new logical partition here called demo. So let's start that up. First thing to do is to open a console window. Drag that on, here we are. Now it's not running at the moment, of course, so we've opened the console window, but we've not actually got anything to talk to. So let's activate this logical partition. And we only have one profile. We could have started a terminal window here by just clicking this and doing it in one go. Let's go into advanced. Um, I want to stop at the SMS phase of the boot up so I can select the boot device. We can see it's gone to the uh, running stage here. I'll bring back our console. It's saying uh, hit zero here to Activate this is the console, so I'll just hit zero. You can see it there scanning through our resources to see what it can boot from. And we've gone into SMS mode here. If I hit, we're going to go to boot options here, number five. And I'll select our boot options. And then I'll say, list me all devices. So it's saying here, I could be over the network, I could be over a hard disk here, there's two hard disk possibilities in this logical partition, or a tape drive or a CD-ROM. And we'll boot this into uh, AIX and install AIX in the next movie. The next movie is installing AIX from a CD.